Hi, welcome to another endorsement interview with the Times Editorial Board. We're here today with Dan Bursack, the Republican candidate for Lake County Sheriff. Welcome. I'm Doug Ross, editorial page editor at the Times. Uh, also in the room we have Brian Vernellis, videographer. Um, Dan, let's begin with the easy question and that's, you know, give us a short synopsis of who you are and what's prepared you for this race. Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, my name is Dan Bursack. I am the Republican candidate for sheriff. Um, basically, I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Lake County, uh, born and raised in Gary. I graduated from Lew Wallace High School, and after high school, I uh, got a job at uh, U.S. Steel, like most of us did. Um, worked there for almost 10 years, got caught in that big layoff during the 80s, and uh, knew that I'd have to uh, change careers. So. Uh, when uh, deciding that uh, I had to change those my career, I uh, wanted to do something that I've always wanted to do, and that was get into law enforcement. So uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, get hired on with the Lake County Sheriff's Department on March 5th of 1990. Uh, my career spans 24 years now uh, in numerous uh, areas of the department, uh, patrol, uh, crime lab, uh, transportation. I also did uh, uh, quite a few years in uh, the civil office and uh, just recently got transferred back to patrol. Okay. Well, uh, um, as you're on patrol, what types of things are you seeing that you'd like to do differently? Uh, down in South County. Uh, they've had me uh, down there a lot. Uh, uh, South County is, is growing by leaps and bounds. What was once cornfield is now uh, subdivisions. So we've got uh, numerous people down there that uh, need protection. Uh, right now, as it stands now, the uh, patrol districts haven't been revamped since I was in patrol the last time around. Uh, I'd like to uh, streamline that to make uh, response times better for uh, and safer for the citizens and the officers alike. Okay, and, and revamped in what way? Uh, redraw the districts. Uh, basically, um, the only difference that they made uh, now was when I originally hired on, we had like three districts. You had the North, Central, and South. Uh, the only difference th that they have now is they, they use Chase as like the intermediate line. Uh, so uh, you have a Southeast and a Southwest and a Central East, Central West district. So uh, uh, what I'd like to do is look at manpower deployment too. We've got 171 officers on the department. Uh, there's no reason why we should be working only with six guys. Right now, we've only got one, you know, in each, in each of those four quadrants, Central East, Central West, uh, Southwest, and Southeast, you've only got one officer. So, you know, you make a traffic stop down a rural area, it might be 10, 15 minutes before your backup could even get there to you. Okay. Um, the... Uh, Deployment would, would bring officers from what areas? Well, basically, uh, if I'm fortunate enough to get uh, elected, I'd like to, during the transition period, sit down with each and in, each individual officer and see uh, where they would like to work. Because I, I look at it this way. If you put a person where they want to work and you make them happy, they do a better job and they make themselves look good. They also, in turn, make me look good as sheriff. So uh, that would be my primary, you know, objective is to um, uh, streamline, you know, look at the manpower and then see where manpower deployment is. Where, you know, where do we got people that don't need to be? You know, if, if need be, bring some of these people back from uh, some of these other agencies that we have them on loan. Um, one of the reasons your, uh, uh, your uh, opponent couldn't be here, uh, John Bunsich, is he says he's uh, tied up with the uh, uh, massive homicide investigation. Um, and so I'm curious, you know, is there a way you would handle homicide investigations differently in the county? Uh, correct. I'd like to, uh, see, I was part of our crime lab. Now I believe they call it CSI. But uh, uh, the crime lab was a good unit. And, I, you know, it, it's a diamond in the rough. What we need to do is we need to capitalize on those type of deals. Uh, you use what we have and promote it, you know what I mean? Um, you know, build it up, you know, make sure, you know, we have uh, the proper training, the proper equipment, um, and, uh, you know, expand it. Okay, how long does it take to uh, get results out of the lab? It's, well, now what they do is you, uh, 
Well, when I was in the crime lab, what we used to do is submit things to uh, the state police post for, you know, different things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but if you have a hot case that you really need to, you know, we did firearms, you know, uh, locally, uh, our firearms examiners would, you know, crank it out. They, you know, they would be able to, you know, take care of it within a roughly short period of time. Okay, so that would presumably, the, the quicker you can get the information, the quicker you can address that. Correct. The, quicker you can start, you know, start building the case against the person and, you know, make sure that uh, you get the uh, charges filed. Okay. Now, Lake County, uh, the Sheriff's Department's involved in a number of multi-agency uh, um, teams. You know, you've got HIDA, you've got, uh, um, um, you know, any number of uh, issues that affect gangs and and uh, whatnot so you know what's your philosophy toward all those um, right now you know uh, using those uh, those agencies and working hand in hand with those agencies is a must okay because we have to you know uh, you know get rid of crime as fast you know as fast as we can of course uh, what uh, what I'd like to do is uh, use people but uh, not neglect the county because my per, my first objective is to patrol and take care of the county okay if if we have the manpower if we have the resources to help out these other agencies then I'm all for it now uh, Lake County is kind of a curious county and the, the so much of it is is uh, uh, I mean of the footprint is municipalities so is your priority the unincorporated area, you know, very heavily, or the whole county, or or what? Well, we have, you know, I have, I would have jurisdiction over the entire county, uh, but the municipalities uh, would have to take care of themselves to a certain point. Okay, we can we can give them manpower because, like, like right now, we're we're utilizing a lot of resources in in Gary. Okay, rightfully so. Um, but you can't turn around and charge Winfield $125,000 to patrol their area and then turn around and provide the same, the same typical type of service that we're doing over there, answering calls in Winfield in Gary and not charge Gary. So, uh, you know, I'm all for working with these people and uh, backing them up in any way they need, you know, on, on the streets, but um, I'm not going to benefit one area of the county at the detriment of another. Okay. Um, one of the uh, uh, major responsibilities is, uh, of the sheriff is the jail. So what would you do with the jail? The jail, I would have to get in there and take a look at it. Uh, I've never personally worked in the jail because when I got hired on, uh, they were under a decree at that time where they were pulling the merit officers out and replacing them with the correctional officers because of that uh, federal law suit. Uh, so what I would do is go in there and literally work the jail for a while to get, you know, get hands-on experience. Um, I'm the type of person that I will not ask a man to do an, a job that I wouldn't do myself. Now, with the, with the jail, there's a lot of problems with the jail. Um, uh, my opponent says that he, uh, he inherited all these problems from the previous administration, but what he fails to say is a lot of that blame falls squarely on his shoulders because he's the first one to take credit about the jail, but um, he doesn't realize that... Um, the original plans were changed. Why were they changed? And who made these changes? This was under his watch. Uh, we had that mold problem that they had to have to take care of that cost the county hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. the original plans called for stainless steel showers. Okay, but all of a sudden we didn't end up with stainless steel showers. Those were changed. Those plans were changed. What I what I'd, I'd like to know is why. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, training and e equipping officers, uh, both in the jail and uh, um, in, in the uh, police side of it. So what would you do differently? Uh, basically, I would build up, uh, we, have a, we have a very, very well training staff, and uh, we have access to the new um, uh, Law Enforcement Academy in Hobart. Uh, I would utilize that. 
what I'd like to do is increase our training to where they actually are giving classes. So not in not only are we training our own people, but we're you know sending out literature to other departments and other agencies to have their people come here and take you know take part of our training and generate some cash for the department. Okay. Um, what's primarily the difference between you and your opponent? Do you think? Uh, politics. My opponent just now recently was made uh, the chairman of the Democratic Party. Um, I'm I'm one that says you know law enforcement is law enforcement, politics is politics. I wouldn't be doing politics now if it wasn't for the fact that this is the only way you can get this job. So I just look at it as it's a long hiring process. But uh, I don't want nothing to do with politics. I have no other political ambitions besides this. And uh, after I'm done with this, I'm, uh, you know, I'm out of politics. Uh, the, you know, my extent of politics prior to deciding to run for sheriff was just voting. So uh, uh, I'm not a political creature where, where he in turn you know, might have other ambitions you know, beyond this, but uh, I believe that uh, Lake County deserves a full-time sheriff that can be there and uh, take care of things. Okay. Well, what haven't we asked that we should have? Um, well, on the end, um, the cost of, of maintaining this jail um, has uh, skyrocketed. Uh, right now, um, as of April, they've uh, uh, spent over eight million dollars, and now they're looking at the fact that it's uh, uh, doing uh, another projected another five point five million. Uh, by the end of the year. Uh, now they're talking that they have to revamp the entire uh, medical floor to uh, accommodate uh, for a psychiatrist and that type of you know, physical uh, uh, maladies. But uh, what I'd like to know is um, why, you know, why did this happen? You know, was that part of the thing? Uh, why was the original medical contract that was put out just recently because uh, uh, my opponent, Sheriff Bunsich, uh, got rid of the uh, the previous uh, medical staff that was there and uh, got in somebody of his own. Uh, why wasn't that? You know, why wasn't the psych psychiatric portion of that included into the uh, into the original contract? Okay. Um, one thing um, we talk about jail crowding every now and then. Um, what would you do to try to alleviate that? Well, in the jail right now, they have a fully functioning uh, courtroom. What I would like to do is get a magistrate or get somebody, you know, work with the prosecutor's office, work with the judges, and see if we can get somebody in there that can arraign these people immediately. Maybe, you know, like have afternoons and, uh, or maybe a judge on the weekends. Um, that way you can have the arraignment process and, and expedite it. Uh, so they can be uh, bonded out if they can bond out. Uh, other thing is look at alternative sentencing. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this endorsement interview. Thank you for viewing.